phone holds out. Um, I've tried to put some jazzy cover pages on the PowerPoint so we can skim through those. But yeah, Ralph, you can go for it. Um, Simon's sent in some really cool macro shots of some grevilleas. I think Simon said they're from a garden in Winuna, um, I believe. Um, part of Simon's property portfolio, but that's uh, that's Grevillea longifolia. Um, we always say that's a really nice plant to grow. Just incidentally, uh, Heather Miles and Jeff House and myself have had a bumper month typing up Grevillea cultivar and species profiles for the database. A lot have gone on in the last couple of weeks, and I've I've gotten addicted to Grevilleas like Peter Old in the last couple of weeks. So I'm trying to remember most of these and, and talk about most of these. Um, Longifolia that went up a couple of weeks ago, um, and and these two Grevillea honey gem and Lana Marie, um, they're they're up there as well. So Grevillea honey gem wasn't even on the database, and it's up there now. But um, Simon's got a cracker photo there of the inflorescence. Um, he also sent in a Grevillea banks, uh, that should say Banksy eye, uh, Grevillea Banksy eye, Banks's Grevillea, which is uh, one of the parents of. A lot of those cultivars that we like to grow um, and Grevillea misty pink as well. Um, these are these two are large shrubs, one of the larger Grevilleas and as Phil, I thought Phil Keen might be here tonight, he sent me some photos but um, these ones can be cut back hard, they flower really well, they're pretty hardy um, and and some of them can flower most of the year which makes them pretty um, pretty you know attractive um i don't know much about this one i don't think this is on the database simon but that's bull eye beauty i'm not too sure about that one at the moment but i'll probably be researching that one um now that you've i don't think it's in our um, plant table list either but that's a really nice color how big does that one get simon do you want to jump in and say something uh, it's just a young plant at the moment it's only um oh, probably a meter and a half high yeah, um, I think it. I think it grows to be a sort of moderate sort of shrub. Yeah, that particular flower is probably past its like peak in in color and and looks. But um, yeah, and we got this from the um, the uh, Illawarra Grevillea Park. Um, yes, flower sales. So. Yeah, yeah. With that name, I'd say it's been bred at the Grevillea Park more than likely. Um, Bolo Beauty. Yeah. Um, I've, I've been looking into a hell of a lot where all these hybrids come from and, and where they started. It's a quite interesting stories behind them and, and the people that are involved. But looking at the leaf, it'd be one of the Banksia, Banksii, sorry, types. Um, yeah, it's it's probably going to grow to three to four meters tall, I'd imagine. Unless you want to prune it and keep it lower. Just um, when you're talking about the Grevillea Banksii, um, I had an I had a specimen that I cut back hard, and I um, and it was the straight, like it's the straight species, not the not a cultivar. Uh, and I cut it back hard, and then the following year I cut it back to that same point, and I didn't really like that at all. I think I think you shouldn't cut them back hard, like twice in a row. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Good tip. Good tip. Um, yeah. It, it died soon after having having been cut back a second time. Okay. Yeah. A tip I got this week was you, if you cut back hard, make sure you follow up with plenty of water. Um, that's a tip I got as well. Yeah. From okay, Jeff. Yeah, that might have been a problem too. Then I'm not sure. Yeah. Yep. Um, Jenny Whiting said she'd join us later, but she sent me Grevillea buxifolia, uh, subspecies buxifolia. We, we've seen this one a few times, and I keep referring you to that specimen. But while well, I say that Jason Salmon's got growing at, at Sutherland Shire Nursery, <laughs> I'm not sure if Jason's the one that looks after it, but it's, it's an absolutely stunning specimen. That photo has gone up onto our database. So I asked Jason if we could use it. Um, and she also sent what I think is Grevillea Ned Kelly. Do you think I'm right about that one, Ronza or anyone? That's the closest I could get. It's a bit like peaches and cream. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't look like Ned Kelly. I think Ned Kelly's just more red. Okay. I would say, yeah, peaches and cream. Really. Right. Okay. No problems. Um, I'll change that in the newsletter. And, and that one just could, went up on the database too. It could be just superb, couldn't it? Old-fashioned, superb. Okay, I'll try and make a note of that. Yeah, either superb or yeah, or peaches and cream maybe. Nice one. 
features and cream. But features and cream doesn't have that much red at the bottom. Okay. Uh, it's too reddish pink around here for features and cream. Right. Okay. Writing all this down. Um, Phil Keane sent some photos, which was good. Um, I've just got it. Sorry? I was saying hello to Phil. Does Savvy miss him? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I've, um, and he's also sent me his plant list because I want to want to buy some plants. But I'll just give you a tip on this one. I found out this week what we call Grevillea elegance isn't the actual right name. We're meant to be calling it Grevillea long john, and I want to talk to Phil about that. But it is a cross between Grevillea longestyla and Grevillea johnsii. That's where the name comes from, Grevillea long john. And there was some sort of commercial reason it got changed to elegance, but um, everyone has just, well, the Grevillea people have decided that's not the valid cultivar name. The, the valid cultivar name is Long John. So I'm trying to communicate that and I'm going to change it in the plant table list and um, in the database as well. Um, and I, because Phil sent me this photo as Grevillea elegance, but it's actually meant to be called Long John. So I will check that and verify that a bit further with, with Peter Old and people like that before um, that becomes. But I wanted to communicate that with you. And he also sent me Grevillea johnsii orange. Grevillea johnsii is a New South Wales species. You find it um, sort of the Tablelands area. And there's this cultivar called orange, which is a quite um, good one to grow and, and popular one to grow. Um, he also sent me Kimberly Gold, which as we've seen from um, Mari is a spectacular plant. It's on my target list for this new place I'm in. I really want to get one. And that's that's a Western Australian one, obviously. And Phil also sent me Grevillea Pink Ice. That's one I know nothing about. And another one I'm going to have to look up and, and possibly do a profile for as well. Um, there's no end to these Grevillea cultivars if you if you start looking around. Um, I thought this was Grevillea Fire Sprite, but Phil has told me it's it's called Knockout. I don't know much about it. Um, it, it looks like it's it's in that sort of Fire Sprite group. Uh, probably a smaller Grevillea, uh, more of a, a a ground sort of shrubby one. But that one looks pretty spectacular. Um, I'm not sure if anyone grows that, but that's some I got sent. Um, Mari has shown us this one before, Grevillea bron bronwene. Uh, that's a Western Australian endangered species that you can grow. Uh, well, Mari's got it growing anyway. Um, interesting inflorescence colour, that sort of reddy orange and these sort of uh, olive type leaves, but it is an endangered one from Western Australia. Uh, Mari showed us that, I think last year as well, I mean, the Zoom meetings. Um, so that's quite nice there. Mari, I wasn't sure about this one on the right and I racked my brains for 10 minutes. Do you know which one it is? Um, no, it, it, we've got it as a standard and right. it's, a, it's a variegated leaf. And I got it from Phil perhaps about 15 years ago. Okay. So yeah. I don't know. I, 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 I'm not good on the names of things. Yeah, it's one of it's in that Perinda group, I think, and I'm gonna to have to nail that one down a bit later. But with that inflorescence, it's there's yeah. all those Perinda ones that have yeah. been made. If it's grafted onto something. No, um, no. Oh yes, it's on yes, because it's it's a you know, a a standard and then on, on it, yes. But yes. I thought it looked a bit like that long Jafolia, the the first one you showed us. It does look like that, but the leaves yes. are, are wrong for that yeah, one. But... Yeah, yeah, they're variegated. Yep, but I'll, I'll check that one out for you. Yeah, I've got a few question marks here. Um, I remembered you sent this from last year and I matched up this photo with last year's photo. Is that Grevillea lollipops? Yes. Yes, score. Yeah. <laughs> um, this one's got a real nice magenta pink. Um, it, it doesn't really capture it in that photo, but Mari sent one last year where the, the inflorescence is much more sort of metallic pink. It's, it's really nice. Um, maybe the sunlight's changed the colour there a bit, but it's got a really standout inflorescence, that one. Yeah. I, don't, I don't like it. it I, I'd be happily pull it out because oh. um, it, the flowers are not long and by the time the um, noisy miners have, have get at it, they damage the, the um, flowers. Yep. So it's not a good cut flower. Yeah. Yes. 
Right. Okay. Good tip. That's a good tip. Um, the one on the right, I, I really racked my brains over this one, but I think it's called Pink Midget. Yeah, I've just it's just a new one I bought. <laughs> I bought two of them. Yep, okay. Now thanks for leaving the sign there. Um I think it's a form of Gravilia sericea, I think. That's what it looks like to me. Yeah, um like just a midget form of um Gravilia sericea, which is which is a great one to grow. Um it does come in a range of forms, that one, but maybe someone's managed to keep one sort of tightly close to the ground. Um I'll, I might have to look into that one as well. I'll have a look at the back of the label and see if, um, if it's got something else on it. Yep, fantastic. Yep. Now, apologies to Heather. This I, I racked my brain trying to remember what this one was called, but it, it's really Candelabra, spectacular. Jan? Sorry? Candelabra. Candelabra. So is, is that? Candelabra. Right, okay. I, th I think that is a form of Banksyoi, I think, but that's um, that's a stunning it's plant, so Heather. Upright. It's just so upright. That yes. Feature. Yeah. Um, is that is that a one is that a one plant, Heather? Uh, no, it isn't. There's a row of three of them. Yes. Um, and I took it from the balcony so that I could get what are currently, you know, the flowers, the inflorescences that are currently blooming, but there are lots more coming on lower down. You know, it, 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 they last a long time. Yeah. 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 How tall are they now? Uh, ooh, probably about three and mm. three meters, maybe. Mm. And they're, yeah. they're stunning. But they do get taller than that. They get to about four, I think. Mm. Four, four and a half, five, something like yeah. that. Well, you can't ask for more than that. That's um, that that's a really beautiful photo. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I really like that one. Yeah, sorry, I forgot the name. Uh, and again, I wasn't sure on this one on the left. I was struggling with that as well. Sorry, I, I, I apologise to you because I should have dug up labels, which I hide under rocks, but I have so many rocks around them that I don't always yeah. manage to find them in time. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. What do you think about that one, Rhonda? The one on the left there? Honestly, it's a bit like um, that knock that knockout and fly sprite. There are so many different cultivar names. Yeah. Yep. Just like you could sort of, yeah, pick something that sounds plausible and like it could be it really. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's well, quite I'm... interesting because the inflorescence is sort of face down. It's actually quite hard to get a photo of the flower for that reason. And I, I realized I've actually got two of them. One of them is a lot larger than that one. Mm. Um, and it has got to about a meter, I'd say. Yeah. Just so you've got an idea of scale. Nice one. Yeah. Yeah. So it might not be one of the Rosmarinifolia um, group, but I'll I'll look that one up for you as well. So so just refer to the newsletter for for future reference. I'll I'll figure them out by then. Um, and this one on the right, I really want this one as well. Um, the Gravilia flexuosa um, or zigzag Gravilia. Um, that's a that's a stunner. Really nice. Um, oh, it is a Western Australian one, I think. Yeah. Could I just ask if anybody else has got one, how successful or techniques perhaps for pruning? Because as you can see in the photo, I sort of just locked it off because it's, it seems to just shoot straight up. Um, and I was hoping to get more of a clump effect in that spot. Has anybody got any hints, please? Uh, Heather, I have one. Mine's about 1.5 high and about two metres wide. The, the, the smell at the moment is absolutely beautiful from those flowers uh, and covered in bees. But I pruned it, I did prune it back last year and it's just full of flower and bud at the moment. So, Karen, Karen did you cut it right down low? Or I didn't much cut did you... it. I, did, I only took a little bit off. I didn't take a lot off. Right, okay, thanks. And there is a huge specimen over um, those gardens that open up, Bar I don't know how to pronounce it, um, those native gardens over the Hills District, is it? Um, Gala. That's it, yeah, he has a huge one over there. One at JB, isn't it, Rhonda? It was at one stage. I, I can't really recall whether it's actually still there or not. I think I bought mine from Phil and it's sat in a pot for about two years before I planted it. It is well drained. Um, it's whatever, yeah, it's just loving it. Mm. Okay, great. 
Great. Thank you. Thanks, Ralph. Um, and Jenny, well, she she sort of sent this photo to show the waddle, but it's got Grevillea sericea there in the on the left hand side. So I, I just threw that. You'll sort of see this photo twice, but um, Grevillea sericea is there, sort of the that's not the pink midget form, that's sort of the shubby form. Um, great bee attractor. Uh, you should be able to get it to grow if, if you're growing it like that in your sandstone outcrop and with some good drainage. That's how you find them in the wild. Um, so uh, that's a, one I want to give a go here as well. Thanks, Ralph. Uh, moving on, changing genus. That, that was all the grevilleas. Uh, this came from Ellie, um, Isopogon formosus. I don't know a hell, a, lot, a hell of a lot about this one, but it's, um, it's a really beautiful plant. Ellie, that's really nice. As far as isopogons go, um, I think that might be a Western Australian as well, I think. Okay, still going? Yep. Um, Simon was the only one who sent in a Mertesi member and he tells me this is Tryptamine saxicola, um, the cultivar called FC Payne. Uh, we probably haven't written that one up yet, but um, how's this one growing, Simon? Pretty well? Still quite new. So I think it was planted um, back in autumn. So, um, yeah, so it's still quite new, but it seems to be going all right so so far anyway. Mm. I, I've obviously put a typo there. I left the P out of thryptamine, but, um, and I think, and that's my guess from what it was. Um, but I'd have to look up the tag if we've still got it. Yeah. Yeah. I know that's that the one used to call Payne's hybrid. It's yeah. not a hybrid, but that's, Many, many years old. It's yeah. pretty common. I think we've, we've definitely had that before, Dan. Yep. Yep. That's my type in Simon, not yours. Yeah. This was um, three hours of rapid work. Sorry, people. Yeah. I hope, I hope you, I've got your names right. That's the most important thing. Um, we're moving on to Waddles. Uh, and Jenny sent this in. I don't know if Jenny's here. And look, I, I just got stumped on whether that's Fimbriata or Floribunda. The leaves are looking a bit on the long side for Fimbriata, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's Fimbriata because it flowers spectacularly like that. So a bit of a question mark on that one. But um, I, I was going to say Floribunda if I had to guess, but we'll call it Fimbriata. So that's a beautiful water, one of the best ones you can grow if, if that's what it is. Yeah. Um, either, either of those species are, are fabulous. Um, oh, what happened to... Ralph, can you just go back for a second? And just back one more. And sorry, go back to the title page. I've lost Jason Salmon's photo somehow. And I've lost Ron's photo as well. It's there as well in the... Yeah, so it's on the cover page. I'm really sorry about that. You were meant to get another rerun. Um, I'll, I'll put this together so quickly. So yeah, Ralph, if you just go back to the cover page for the waddles, uh, Ron's sent in the top one. And I think that's Acacia elongata. I can't come up with a better name for that. That's in your mum's garden, Ronda, did you say? Yeah, it would have come from the southern nursery. And honestly, okay. I probably just grabbed it without thinking very much and I put it in the ground and I just looked at it the other day and thought my god the whole thing is just a meter high and it's just got flowers right up the stem it's very close to the stems and yes the leaves are very stiff and sort of angular so it's, it's quite an unusual look um yeah. That's flowering so well. I think that's um, I think that's a Kesheri longata, um, which you, you can find. Um, I've, I've found it at Menai before, um, but yeah, the way the flowers are sticking to the stem or coming off the stems that caught my attention as well. All the, all the flower heads coming off the stems, it's amazing. Um, and Jason sent in the bottom photo, and I, again, I apologise to you too that you were meant to get your own um, full screen. Um, but Jason gave us Acacia longifolia from um, did you, Lucas Heights, I think you said Jason or Menai. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, I've there's, got that flowering everywhere. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I've I've got it out the back in the Young Street Reserve in Sylvania. I've been picking bits off as I walk the dogs and putting them in a vase on the dining table. Um, so I've been having fun doing that. But um, just see the difference there. R Rhonda's wattle, you've got flowers in the globular heads. And in Jason's wattle, you've got the flowers in the spikes. That's the two different sort of conditions you get in the 
waddles with the fire loads rather than the the bipinate leaves. Um, Dan. Yeah. On on uh, that one, that's Rhonda's photo. There, there's a group called um, uh, Acacia Longissima. I think. Yes. It's not that. It could be. It could be. But there's about five or six or so of them at JB Reserve in a in a group there. Yep. Yeah. I. Yeah. I can look one, one up, Peter. Yep. I've got one actually that. Uh, I was taking photos of because it's notable for how many times it's been broken in half by a deer and it's still <laughs> flowering like that. So, right. I just looked up um, the Robinson book and Longissima has rod flowers in rods. Yes. So, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to suggest that the, the labelling might be questionable. <laughs> Is John on the line? <laughs> <laughs> Well, but, so I, I'm saying it based on the label. Um, and, yeah. and I saw another one somewhere and I thought, oh, it looks a bit different to the one I've got. Whereas I think Elon Garta, according to um, Robinson, it looks more like Elon Garta because the flowers are right at the stems and the leaves right. are quite okay. angular. Yeah. I'm, I'm not check sure. Check out those ones at the reserve. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure, Peter. I can I can have a look into it, but but that's a good thing that Ron just said. Sometimes you can think a waddle is a particular waddle, and then someone will say to you, "Well, no, it can't be that one because that one has flowers in the in the spikes, like in Jason's photo." What, one um, of the odd things about the one that I've got is that it seemed to bud up a whole year ago. Yep. Nothing happened, and then it flowered this year. So yeah. I've grown it from seed, but anyway, I'll have to find out what it really is. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, they're nice. And, and sorry, guys, you, like I said, you were meant to get your own page. Um, I just went too quickly on this today. Um, the peas, got some nice peas here coming up. Um, Harden Birds of Violacea from Jenny Whiting. We, we all know about that one. It's, it's a must have, I think. Um, I don't have it here yet. I must get it. Um, beautiful at this time of year. Um, August is, is when you see them. And then Simon had close-ups of the um, flowers. So the first plant was Jenny's. This um, photo is Simon's. Um, so that was really handy, Simon, um, to back that back up Jenny's photo there. Uh, Jill got Dewinia retorta, a really common Sydney sandstone pea. Sorry, I didn't put the common name in there. That's um, eggs and bacon, it gets called. Um, it doesn't have spiky leaves like a lot of Dewinias do. It's got nice soft leaves. It's a good identifying feature if you run your hands up and down it. You tend to find the prickly ones on sand, on clay soil and you find this one on sandstone, but it's a really common one in Sutherland Shire, especially Bonnet Bay and areas such as that. Um, beautiful plant. I'm not sure how easy it is to grow in a garden, that one. The same thing in the bushland, Jill? Yes. Yeah, Jill sent some bushland ones in. Yeah, that, that was in bushland, that one. Yeah, that was up from near Grays Point primary school thanks jill um this is a stunner from lisa um this canadia nigricans um which is in our plant table list it has made an appearance before um it's a western australian canadia i think and it's really robust um do you want to tell us lisa how that one's growing uh it's it was a tiny, tiny tube stock, like a about a you know a five centimeter tube that wasn't looking real good for a while. So I just chucked it in a bigger pot and threw it in the back of a garden bed, and kind of forgot about it until I just looked at it recently, and it's <laughs> obviously doing all right now. So, right. so it's still in the pot, the big pot. Yeah, it's not even in a particularly big pot. It's not a particularly big plant yet, but it's climbing up, like it's happily climbing over other things. So I'm just going to leave it there and see what happens. Mm. We grew it as a ground colour or a garden colour uh, many years ago in, at Oyster Bay. It was um, yeah, quite vigorous. It just became a mat. We had it for, for three or four years, I think. Mm. They're just so cute. They look like little magpies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I didn't see a magpie, but yeah, I can now that you mention it. Yeah. Great. Really. Yeah. That flower color is just amazing. Um, yeah. Well, mate, I don't know. Maybe you can grow it up the side of a shed or over the top of a shed or mm. something like that. Maybe, maybe that'd be fun, but um, thanks Richard. That, that's a good insight. It, it does say on the internet, it's pretty robust. I've, I've never had anything to do with it, but 
might be worth consideration. And Jenny, um, it was really good that Jenny captured the local one, uh, Kanedia rubicunda. So that can be just, so well, that can be pretty vigorous, especially after a bushfire. It can just come up in sandstone areas in just massive carpets, just depending where you are. Uh, in a lot of bush care sites, it, it, it comes up if, if they have a fire, they, they come up after that. Um, Jenny's got that one growing. I'm not sure if that's um, natural or um, Jenny's got some sort of remnant stuff in her garden, but um, you know, that's that's a really good shot of the flowers. They've got, they got funny pea flowers, the Canadians, a bit, bit sort of wilted looking, but that's a good contrast there of the two plants. There are other Canadians as well. There's a good specimen on the um, the walk we did down to um, down to the boat shed. <clears throat> There's a good specimen in flower at the moment. Yeah. Thanks, Ralph. All right, that was it for the peas, I think. Uh, Rutaceae. You had a few Rutaceae. It's a good time of the year for them, as we were saying. Yeah. Two of our members snatched um, Baronia letifolia, both from bushland, I, th I believe. Um, we we get it. We have a love hate relationship with these because we try and grow them and they're really hard. <laughs> but um, the, if you haven't got hands on with the leaves, have a crush of the leaves next time you're out. Um, they've got this really strong odor. It's a good identifying feature. The leaves can be trifoliate or sort of singular. Um, but uh, Richard said these are having a real cracker season. Yeah. Fantastic to see the ants on the petals there on the um, on the left. Yes. There's sort of masses of them in the park at the moment, and you'd mm. almost say it's say an acre of them in mm. the park. Yeah, what, what I always say, and like though, it's very dangerous if you and you wouldn't be doing it now, but if you drive up the F3 motorway, say up to Newcastle, you can just see them continuously up the top of those sandstone cliffs adjoining the F3 motorway. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a bit dangerous to have a look if you're driving, but um, sometimes in some years, in at this time of year, they just uh, you just see pink flushes of pink yeah. as you're going along, yeah. and, and that's what they are. Yeah, yeah. In some years, um, Jason sent this one in. What a cracker! Um, Philotheca myoporoides. Um, that that's a great one, Jason. Growing really well. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, I've got that <coughs> growing under a uh, uh, camellia. Yeah. It's in pretty shady spot, so I'm really happy on clay. But yep. it's, I've got three of them in a little clump and I got it from Phil last year mm. and uh, they're, done, they're, they're doing really well. Yeah. When you, when you look at that, you can really see how um, they're related to citrus. Um, they're, they're, you know, they're, if you look at a citrus tree flower, it's almost um, the same. They, these are our nati native sort of citrus um, alloys, you know, they um, can be difficult to grow um, in some cases. This is one of those sort of easier ones. Um, but uh, I've tried this one in my last house and I think it died pretty quickly, but, um, this one of Jason's is, um, spectacular, really beautiful. Yeah. Um, and Ellie got this one in the bush, um, which is a spectacular plant, but I've never come across anyone growing it. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is Philotheca buxifolia. It's, it's actually subspecies buxifolia. Um, grows in sort of uh, sandy deposits and uh, not so much sandstone outcrop, but sort of sandy deposits in the heath and, mm. and a bit, bit of moisture. Uh, mm. Spectacular specimen. Um, I, again, I've, I've never seen them grown successfully. I'm, I'm not sure if people have tried or not. And Dan, you can buy that. And there are also a couple of cultivars. Yeah. Uh, they're quite small and compact. So it's actually quite a, a nice plant because the leaves are quite dense and then the flowers are quite dense. So it really works as a small, compact plant. I'm just trying to can't remember what the sort of cultivar name is, but it just, there are a couple that are very small. Mm. That's worth looking out for. Yes. Yeah, it'd be nice to give that one a try. The philodecas obviously respond to fire um, between, we went for a walk from Watermala South uh, last week, and it's just thick with um, philodeca. Uh, after the burn of uh, what last year right nice one nice richard yeah yeah be, be well worth giving it a go wouldn't it yeah especially if you, you get a couple of them to grow in a, in a bed yeah um mari sent this one in this this is one that um some of our members uh, uh, like to muck around with um, um peter shelton's given me some plants before um not not that i kept them alive but i'll, I'll, I'll try again um <laughs> 
Cyria prostrata, I believe it's an endangered species in New South Wales on the, on the Coffs Harbour headlands, but um, it uh, takes readily to cultivation and um, it's, it's grown and propagated quite easily um, in gardens. It just happens to be um, threatened with extinction in the wild, but it's, it's sort of on coastal headlands, so hopefully not getting bulldozed by development too much. Um, yeah, it's a nice little plant. Prostrate. We're on to the orchids. Uh, there are quite some interesting things here. Um, Lisa's captured this. You, you've probably seen these in the bush uh, this time of year. That's that's our fella mitra. I've seen this year. I've, I've spelt that wrong as well. <laughs> fella mitra ixioides, the sun orchid. Um, it's um, really nice in the in the sandstone. Those blue dots on it, it's a bit of an identifying feature, but um, Margaret tells us they don't always have the blue dots, but when they do, it's it's sort of a good identifying feature. Uh, I've never heard of anyone growing them. Um, maybe the orchid experts have had a go, but um, they can get up to sort of 60, 70 centimetres tall sometimes and, and be really um, stunning, yeah. Um, yeah, Lisa, that, that one does grow from cuttings. Um, and if you talk to Peter about it, um, he's, he, he knows all about that one. Yeah. Um, yeah, great, great capture there, Lisa. This was really interesting. Um, oh, we've lost, I can't see the top of that slide, but that's all right, Ralph. Um, Mari's got this orchid, um, which is a cross, she tells me, between <laughs> what's called Denjobium bigger bum which is the Cook Town oh, Orchid, <laughs> and uh, Denjobium speciosum. And it's sold as Denjobium elegant heart. That's what you'll see it sold as. That's the cultivar. And Mari's got two of these growing, one on a tree and one in a pot. Do you want to tell us about those, Mari? Um, it, it, yes, it's really easy to grow. Um, Ruth, my sister Ruth gave me about, oh, 10 years or, or so ago, and it, it's you can strike it easily. I gave it to them at um, Picnic Point, you know, that place there. Um, I gave a big pot of that to the, um, the man, um, Sylvan, Sylvan, Grove. Grove, Sylvan Grove. I gave them some because they didn't have any. But it's, it's easy to grow um, and it's great fun. Nice. Okay, good. Yeah, it's a stunning. Um, I just got, gave you a close up there, one close up. Um, yes. Beautiful big flowers. That's that's well worth trying, I would say. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So elegant heart, if you want to try and get that one. I, I found several web links um, today for that one. Mm. Sensational. Um, just to keep you tracking, guys, we, we're over halfway through, uh, well over halfway through. So um, I'll keep tracking along. We saw this from Mari last week, uh, sorry, last month, um, the Terra Solis Curta, the Blunt Greenhood. That's a fantastic colony. Mm. It just looks, um, I wouldn't let anything near that. Not a not a cat or a dog or anything. That's just it's sort of like pour some pour some lemonade on it and it will die. Don't let anyone touch it. Yeah, but mm. that's um that's a fantastic colony. That's amazing. Yeah. Are, are you growing that inside or outside? No, no, it's on on the deck at the back. Oh, okay. Uh, it gets, gets the morning sun. I've got it hanging. Yeah. And uh, that was one that remember I said that we got it from that man from Cogra. And um, and it was broken up. Ruth's got a couple of bits. Uh, Margaret Broadhurst um, minded it um, for a few months when one a few years ago. But it's um, yeah, it, it's much better this year because remember last month I, I it was much shorter, and it's come up well. But it's just it looks quite happy, doesn't it? it does I'm very happy. But no. I forgot to bring it out um, from the garage earlier, and I, don't, I brought it out later because I forgot. Uh, yeah. yeah, so that's why it's doing well now. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Nice one. So that's a that's a local Sydney one. Um, a Denjobium. Um, look a, a bit bit. Um, I feel a bit inadequate here. Look, look, Murray's isn't quite flowering and Richard just sent me a whole heap that, that were flowering, but that's okay. Um, they're coming on. Um, I've got a couple of these to muck around with myself, um, which have come from my wife's late uncle. So that's, that's good. Um, but um, look, I'll, I'll show Richard's photos in the next um, meeting. And I know other members have these as well, but um, these are spectacular once they flower. 
Um, yes, I've got a whole, uh, Ralph, uh, uh, Dan, I've got a whole pile of them that are mm. all nearly ready to go and I've been watering them. Yeah. So they're much happier, but I yeah. just sort of put it in just because I did orchids. Yeah. Yeah. When, when we did that walk at Joseph Banks, Angus Stewart told me that uh, light can play a big role in those. Um, the oh, amount of yeah. light they get every day um, affects the flowering a fair bit, whether they're, you know, full shade or, or full sun or whatever. Um, so that's a good tip. Um, I forget what Angus said exactly, but he did say that to me. Um, we had two members sending two pomoderas. Look, these are a bit underrated. These are a really nice plant. Um, Lucinda sent in um, pomoderas lanigera. Uh, and there was a bloke on Garden in Australia a couple of weeks ago who had a nice native garden and he had some of these growing really well um, in Victoria. Um, Heather also sent one in, but Heather, I'm just not sure if that's Pomoderis lanigera. If you look at the two photos, you can see a fair bit of difference in the leaf formation and um, just the general appearance of the leaves a bit. When you collect one of these in the bush, you really have to spend time keying it out. They're very similar and there's a lot of different ones. Um, there is a few common ones in Sutherland Shire, but your one could be Lanigia or it could be Ferruginia or, or one of those. There's a lot of different texture in the leaf. There's different hairs going on on the stems and the leaves. You, you have to spend a bit of time keying them out. But they're well worth growing, these um, Pomoderis. So I think they're a bit undervalued in gardens. So they, I, I'm not sure how easy they are to grow. Is, is Lucinda here tonight? Yeah. Tell us about this one, Lucinda. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I bought it from the council nursery only about six months ago. Right. It's grown quite well. It's a fa fairly shady spot, so yep. yes, I'm very happy with it. Yeah, it's looking good. It's looking really good. <laughs> could, I, could I just mention that I think mine's suffered a lot because it's on a very windy, in a very windy spot, which okay. I wouldn't do again. I used to shade it, you know, like protect it a bit with shade cloth so that it didn't get as much wind, but... I've given up on that and it's not doing terribly well now. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I must give those a try. They're, they're really, they're good. They're, they're nice, wholesome shrubs, those. Yeah. Uh, okay. APAC. Um, Simon's got this uh, really good photo of a flannel flower. So I had to whack that in. Um, we mm. all know about these. Um, maybe those members we've got who have those spectacular ones can, um, like, like Jane and others, um, can send the men next month so that's a good photo from simon now heather wanted to know about this one which she photographed in bushland uh heather this is xanthosia pilosa um it's it's called woolly xanthosia it's a relative of the flannel flower uh i've never really heard of people growing them that much but they're very common in sandstone bushlands really 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 common and they're sort of a, a bit of a ground cover or, or small scrambling shrub has anyone ever tried to grow that? Jason might want to comment. I think the nurse, the council nursery has been growing those. Yeah, we've got them growing with cuttings. Uh, they're a bit tricky because with the, or the shade, the, the glass house at the nursery has been playing up. But um, yeah, they, and they're, because they're furry, they can get a bit of a fungal attack on them. But we have grown them, not in bulk. Um, but yeah, they're everywhere through the bush on the sandstone. Mm. Um, infill plant, I think in a bit of a rockery, sunny spot. Because the flowers aren't very spectacular, but the foliage is interesting. Mm. Yeah. So that's about it for that one, Heather. But um, yeah, if you, you give it a go, I guess, if um, especially if you've got some sandstone country. <laughs> Um, it's also, I'll add, it's a highly variable species over New South Wales too. Um, and um, I, I know one particular botanist who looked into it years ago to try and break it up into different species. And I think he just concluded it was it was all highly variable, a bit, bit like Maya Juga. Um, we move on to daisies. Um, just got some daisies here, Asteraceae. Uh, Jill sends this one in um, every year. It's a, it's an absolute stunner. It's, it's a pink form of Ozothamnus diosmophilius. Ozothamnus diosmophilius is a, is a Sydney and, and further afield species, but the flowers are white. They're usually white in the bush, but someone's found a pink form somewhere and they've brought this one into cultivation and it's called pink rice flower. 
Um, that's what it's sold as or, or you know, the species name and, and pink after it. Um, that's a really nice plant, Jill. And if you go to the next photo, uh, Ralph, yeah, you can get a real um, impression of it there. It's like, like these little sort of cauliflower shaped sort of structures with the flowers. Um, and I've grown the white one in a garden before and it was fine. It, it grew up to about three meters tall and lasted about oh, maybe five or so years and then sort of died. And, and being a daisy, that's what a lot of daisies do. But um, this is stunning, Jill. Do you want to say anything about this one? Um, uh, there's one that I've grown behind it, which is a darker pink. But at the moment, it's just starting to come into bud. Um, I cut it back very hard after flowering. Um, it does have a fairly strong smell if you cut it in a cut flower. That's the only thing. But yeah, it looks really pretty. It's one of the few things that's really a massive colour at the moment. Yep. Nice, I, yeah. I really liked um, listening to um, the Menai group the other day. They were talking about sprinter which i hadn't heard before talking about the beginning of winter and the end of spring and the flowers that are there so i really like the the sprinter season mm. yeah that that tim and whistle idea that we, we've got five seasons in in australia it's quite it's quite interesting actually yeah um nice one that's really nice yeah i was just going to say that, those osothamnus and their their relatives the genus called cassinia if you crush the leaves of those and smell they've got a sort of curry like smell um that's a feature of those plants uh, um it's it's really strong um and some of those cassinias get called curry curry bushes they're um quite quite nice um simon this is a brachys comb as you said or, or brachys comey i'm not sure which one it is multi is one of the commonly grown ones but unless you get a good shot of the leaves they're a bit hard to identify but well worth growing they're um i, I think it's a multivita um cultivar but i'm not exactly sure what it just it was given the word pink or deep pink or something mm. yeah that's a nice one. Yeah, because normally the multi of the flowers are sort of purple, but um, yeah, that's that's a nice one. Um, well worth growing. Uh, Phil sent this one in. I think I've got it right. I used to grow this myself years ago. Rodanthe anthemoides, I think, if if people think I'm right about that. Um, chamomile sunray. Uh, I grew this once in a garden at Hammondville years ago, and my wife and I did really well with them. We had them in sort of a strip um near the front door in a in a garden below the veranda they they did really well for quite a while and flowered most of the year um there was rarely a time where there wasn't flowers on them if you can get hold of those they're well worth a try pretty hardy um pretty easy to grow those ones are they a local variety Dan? uh no i uh, don't know where you find rodanthe i think you find them out in central new south wales and and further west from there, Miss, I think. Yeah, very yeah. good. And I should check that out. They're, they're well worth it. Yeah. Um, the apacrids, we just had a few apacrids come in. Um, Jill's captured this really pink woolsia, which um you can see woolsia like this and even red down the south coast around Jarvis Bay, but um sometimes in Sydney you see them like this. Um and that's a really good capture, Jill. Um, usually they're white, but this one's pink. The, um, the walk uh, for people, probably the people that are allowed to go there already know it, but the track that goes from Florence Parade to the Oval behind um, Grays Point Primary School, about 50 metres away from the school. And at the moment, it's just a one person wide track and takes about 15 minutes and it's lovely with its flowers and that's where this one was and the smell at the end closest to the oval of the woolsia is just absolutely beautiful at the moment but I've never seen um, a whole bush so pink as this one before. Mm. Yeah, uh, nice Jill, caption. Sure, yeah. I was going to say with the, um, the woolsia I noticed a whole stack of seeds underneath my plant, so I've kind of scooped them up and tried to, um, I don't know how I'll go, if they'll take or anything. I haven't um, 
yeah, no expertise in this, but I thought, well, I might as well, they're there, I might as well try something. So I have, so. Thank you. You'll be my best friend ever. <laughs> Fingers crossed then. I wish they could um, put that perfume into a perfume. I'm not a perfume girl, but I'd buy a bottle of it if they did. <laughs> that was a marketing idea for someone. Yeah. Um, and you've captured this jewel. I'm pretty sure it's a Pacris obtusifolia. Just one of the Pacris that grows in the wetter areas, um, usually near creek lines uh, in the Royal. That's what I'm pretty sure it is. Um, I've never heard of anyone growing it. I, again, like, sort of like the baronias, this group of plants is very notoriously difficult. I've heard of some people trying to grow wools here um, a bit more, um, but this one, for example, um, you might be able to grow it in a pot to start with and, and go from there, but beautiful plant, really nice. One was um, on the Bunguna path. Yep, yeah. Um, Okay, I've just got a whole bunch of sort of uh, different things. And can you believe two members sent this in, which was great. Um, James captured Sudanthus pimelioides. Um, a really interesting plant, this one. I don't see it very often, but it is in the Royal. And uh, especially in, in the sort of upper parts of George's River National Park, you know, the Campbelltown area is where I've seen a lot of it. And Phil sent it in as well. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone grows this one. Anyone know? Any comment? If Phil sent it in, he probably grows it. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. Maybe he's mucking around with it. I'll have to ask him about it. Yeah. Um, this had me stumped for a... I can't believe this had me stumped for about 10 Isn't minutes. Um, one, because... Oh. I thought the sort of flowers were hanging in midair sort of thing and, and weren't part of anything surrounding it. And then I had a really close look at, and I, I finally tuned into the foliage above. It's, it's just Bessaria spinosa, but it normally flowers in January. It doesn't normally flower in, in spring, but it, it might be doing a bit of spot flowering here. But that's what that is. Um, I thought it was wedding bush for a second, and then I, mm, I, yeah. I thought more about it, but it's Bessaria spinosa, especially with the foliage up above. It's sort of unmistakable. It's a thorny native blackthorn. I had to walk through a heap of it earlier this week in, in Skyville National Park. Um, it's more it's a more Cumberland plain species, but you do get it. There's a whole heap of it at uh, Park Menai. Um, I was there the other week collecting plants as well, or collecting samples, I should say. Um, it's um, it, it does grow on the sort of normally the the sort of clay or, or shale sand transition. It's not really a sandstone species, but you, you can sometimes find it on sandstone, and there, there are bits of it in the southern shire here and there. But it's a, it's a real Western Sydney species um Bessaria. it's it's related to batosperum so they grow fast they got similar flowers and they, they really uh come up readily after a bushfire as well um and there's some experiments going on on the cumberland plain about whether it's better to reduce its dominance a bit like batosperum undulatum to get other things to flourish but um they're nice enough plants in a way i think i i think we had a speaker who talked about sydney turpentine nine bark Forests on the um, Hoyanamata shale remnants left in the yep. Sutherland Shire, and yep. I think he said it's in a common understory plant in that in that community, plant community. Yes, yeah, you're right, Simon. Yeah, if if you want to see it, go to go to Park Menai. That's that's a beautiful place to hang out, Park Menai. Um, it's in Pollard Park as well at Kirrawee on the railway corridor. Yep, yep, and it's it's around the place. It's it's. It pops up every now and then in sandstone, but definitely more common on the clay soil. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Good one. Awesome. Um, this is beautiful, Jane. I I used to grow this. I, I grew this at my last place, uh, which, which is just across the road here. Um, that's Dodonea viscosa, and that's a fruit of, of Dodonea viscosa. This is a common New South Wales species with a lot of subspecies. If you ever look it up on PlantNet, um, it's more of an inland New South Wales thing and it's a Western Sydney plant as well. Um, where did you get this, Jane? Um, well, the, those last couple of photos, I didn't actually take them. Uh, friends of mine down at Grays Point uh, were walk, walking there at Reeves Flat, so the Basaria in Dodonia, this one, and um, he sent them to me for identification, me of all people, but anyhow, 
Um, I thought this was a Dodonia, but I didn't, I thought, no, no, not what I know it, but I mean, generally know it when the fruit has burst open, and you see that very fine leaf. And the Basaria, well, I thought it couldn't have been that because it was the normally flower in January. And the, was, that was on Kangaroo Creek on a walk they did from Robinson's Knoll. So I didn't take any of those three photos, but I did get their permission to show them tonight. Yeah, thanks, Jane. You probably told me that actually in the email. Yeah, but... Um... You won't see much of this one in Sutherland Shire, but um, if it's growing there naturally at, at that area, that's that's interesting. Um, but it's the fruits you want. The flowers aren't very spectacular at all, but if when you get those fruits, they're quite nice. And I pruned mine and I turned it into a little sort of umbrella, high umbrella sort of shrub. It was it was nice. And, uh, and when I moved out, it was still growing. Thanks, Ralph. I'll try and whip through. Uh, just a couple of last to go. Um, Heather sent in Patasonia sericea. Uh, that's one of our native iris type plants. Um, I haven't heard of many people growing that one, but it's a it's a iris type monocot that's probably well worth having a go at if you can get plants. I'm trying to grow it, Dan, but it's looking a bit iffy. I've got three plants. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pretty difficult. Yeah. 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 Give it a go. Yeah. Uh, I think this is Leshenolsha from Phil. Uh, I was thinking Dampiera for a second, but I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a Western Australian. Leshenolsha, uh, some of our members grow these for that flower colour. It's pretty unique. Um, hard to get hard to get many plants with that sort of colour. Um, grow growing pots, or some people say, or um, maybe, maybe grow them in a rockery or something like that. But um, that was from Phil today. Uh, he didn't tell me what this one was, but I think it's Guishinosha letifolia, I think. And I've got to check this with him, but um, that's what I think it is. It's a hibiscus relative uh, from Western Australia, I think. Um, unless someone's got a better idea on that one. Can't say too much about it, but um, Lloyd and Phil muck around with these hibiscus type things like, um, I always forget the names of them. Um, but um, they're quite nice, probably well worth um, putting in. You get sort of larger flowers on those on those hibiscus type plants. Uh, this is from Mari, just a native violet, um, viola heteracea. If you've got a nice sort of shady, moist area, that's definitely well worth planting. Um, I love that plant and I'm, I'm probably gonna try and incorporate that into here as well somewhere. Um, when, you, when you walk into some wet sclerophyll forest and you get carpets of it, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. Just wanna lie down on it. Really nice plant. Mari had some ferns. I just kicked in two of these. Um, the bird's nest fern, Adiantum, really easy to grow. I'm growing one of those as an indoor plant at the moment under a glass ceiling and it's doing really well. Um, and we've got the Elkhorn fern, Platycerium superbum, uh, which you can grow on a, on a, well, Mari's got it growing on a tree fern here. Um, or on a, on a piece of board you want to nail to the wall or something like that. Quite nice. Um, we've had some pests photo sent in. Um, Rhonda sent in this turpentine leaf. I don't have a clue what that is, Rhonda, whether it's two things or one thing morphing into a more scary thing. I'm not sure. I was uh, surprised when I saw it because they looked like they were sort of fleshy um, lumps that you could squash, but you couldn't really. Uh, and there's some of the red ones look like they're turning yellow. So I think it is all the mm. same thing, but... Um, I think they're, they're wasps. Wasps? Yeah. Mm. You open them up and you'll find little larvae in the middle. Okay. I think it's a gall from the wasp. Yeah. Interesting. And, and was there much of it on the turpentine or did you only find one leaf like that? Um, the other one sort of caught my eye because of the colour, but I actually walked past it again just the other day and there were other leaves that had more little rocks on them as well. Yep, yeah. nice. It's and all, it looks like it's got black fungus or something on it. Yeah, it might be a couple of things going on, which is um, uh, or uh, sometimes the case with, with pests on plants. Um, and Jill sent these in. I've seen these a lot. These are, I think, what you call sawfly larvae, and they might even be what they call the blue steel sawfly. 
if you ever see one of those flying around, they're a beautiful um, insect. Um, these are common on eucalypt saplings. So if you ever, sometimes in Western Sydney, I've been in revegetation areas with a lot of eucalypts being planted. And if they're juveniles, sort of two to three meter, four meter eucalypt saplings, you can easily find a ton of these guys mulch, uh, chomping their way through the juvenile eucalypt leaves. They just seem to like that sort of thing. Um, if you point your finger towards them, and, and if you're brave enough to get your finger almost touching them, they all raise their tails towards you and um, sort of try and scare you off by, by all, all together raising their tails. They're quite interesting. But I think you'll find they're sawflies. Yeah, sawfly larvae. Just some final shots uh, from Jill, um, some bushland to Grace Point. Um, that seems to be all the rage at the moment, going for a walk. Got some nice scribbly <laughs> gums there. A um, bit of Pasunia and other things. Jill got this, and I, I think, again, Jill's captured the Dilwinia. And I think there's an acacia there in flower, which might be Ulyssifolia, I think. But oh, it's a really nice photo. Some dense shrubbery. And this is really yes. funny. <laughs> um, Jill sent this in. I think Jill said her son took it um, in South Australia, um, just a Xantheris but of some sort. Um, it's a nice bushland um, in South Australia. Um, yeah, I can see the resemblance, Jill. <laughs> and oh. Jill sent this as well. Um, Jill's just showing off now. <laughs> um, and I tried to identify as much as I could, but I was there's a list of, of things I could see, and I might be wrong about some of them. But what's what's the protea type plant? Which one? The um sort of um the yeah. One the orange and yeah i forget what it's called it's a very scruffy sort of little plant about a meet uh two feet high and they like heather was saying it the flowers kind of point down but it's actually a stunning flower absolutely stunning so, the, um, pimelia thesoides or something the quallop bell oh is that what it is the pimelia oh. Actually, I, I think uh, we had this one last year or the year before, and I couldn't remember the name, and I had to tell you about a week later. It's something Grandiflora, the Grandiflora. Oh, yeah, Peter, I remember that. I Rose tried, in the shade. I tried to find that, yeah. Phil, Phil sells it. It's not a protea at all, is it? No. It's from no, it's... Phil, yeah. Yeah. That's the right. The flowers are exquisite, really, really beautiful. Not yeah. on my piece of dead vegetation. <laughs> yeah, that's on the tip of my brain now, Peter. I'll, I'll find that. I'll look it up. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's Proteaceae at all. It's something completely different. But what I was saying to um to Dan was I've started. Um, I got a bit a bit carried away here. It's much better having one flower in each thing. And I have them lined up at the sink. And it's amazing how much more absorb, observant I've become when you just pick one little flower um, to sit in a vase. And um, knowing I was going to photograph it, I had to, I couldn't leave any out and I'd run out of lids and perfume bottles. And but um, having just one thing in each, um, I find it really lifts your spirits and and particularly going into the garden to try and find things. I go out with all my little vases filled with water and try and find something to go in each. And you notice the very first flower coming out on a bush that you wouldn't have noticed otherwise. And particularly with the one we've just been discussing, which I've forgotten the name of already, something Grandiflora. It, it makes you look at it, whereas you know, I probably wouldn't have been aware of that at the moment. So, All right. I recommend it as a um, COVID focus event for the day. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that's me done, Rhonda. Well, I think we can do a round of applause there for Dan and everyone who sent the photos in. And I think that was a fantastic photo to end on, Jill. So thanks very much for just reminding us of uh, how we can just look at things a little bit differently in these uh, times. Uh, and certainly just seeing all the photos on the screen like this, you just notice so many different things about flowers and you know, Simon's background there behind him, you can really get the 
little of oh, some of the flowers. That's fascinating. I know Ralph also has um, a few photos from a walk in the Royal National Park. Is that something you can um, just show Ralph or? Yes, I can zap through them quickly as long as we keep down to not waffle on too much, we should be right. I don't yeah. Okay, yeah, that's great. Thanks, Ralph. Okay, so that's the flowers on the Leptomeria, which I don't recall seeing before. And um, if we can go to the next slide. It's thinking, thinking. There we go. Oops, gone too far. So there was a few berries left on that, and they're lovely to eat. This one, I wasn't sure what it was, but Dan told me, and I've already forgotten. Uh, Luca Pogan and Plexicolis. Of that. course, yeah, very pretty. Quite a lot of it. Pacris, we all know that one. We've seen that on our plant table. Wasn't sure what that one was. Was it Constabulae? Mm -hmm. I, th I oh, think so, yeah. Different. I think so. Yep. Uh, fairly pink, fairly sort of reddish yeah. form of um, Sericea. Yeah. Well, yeah. That I just took because I like the new growth, but I've forgotten what that one's called as well. Uh, also that's my uh, Stipuloides, isn't it? Uh, stipula stipularis. Stipularis, sorry. Yeah, yeah I'd, I'd love to grow that. I'd love to be able to grow that. Because come up. That looks like one that we've got um, a lot uh, near us, and I've dug a lot up from the footpath across the road, and it um, grows really well. Can grow it easily if you just have it on crushed sandstone, basically. As soon as you do any improvement to the soil, it doesn't go very well at all. That's where it was, next to that rock face. I'm not sure what that one was either. Just Smilax Glycinoides. John, John Arnie lives on that one. <laughs> <laughs> nice Corio in flower. Mm, That's quite a pink one. Mm. Not quite as pink as, um, was it Heather showed that one? Uh, Jill. Jill, that's right. Yeah. Is that blueberry ash? Blueberry ash. Yep. That's down near Audley. So these are just some shots down the bottom of the hill before I walked up the other side. <clears throat> Oh, that's the new boat shed that they've mm. refurbished. It's looking pretty good. Nothing inside yet, but um, they've done a good job of it. They're going to be, right? Sorry, what was that? Is there going to be stuff inside it? Is the boating going to come back? The boating's going to come back. They're meant to be having some of it as uh, a cafe or um, some sort of shop, I think. They're planning. They want to try and make a bit of money from it. It's going to be an open uh, open area for the public to use as well. Yes. Yeah. I just like that fig tree growing down the rock. We saw the baronia earlier. And some banks here in the background. We saw the Thelemitra before as well. I'm pretty sure that's the narrow leaf one. Um, I'm not sure. That's it there. Right. No, that's that's the still the um, Anemophilus. Yeah. So the two are the same there, I think. I think they're the same? Yes. Yeah, they're the same, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, that's a good one to grow. Yeah. 
you'll see the the Anitnia Pholus over near the new tower on the um, on the Anana Hill fire trail. So in the bush, there's a few tracks just going off to the south near the radio near the uh, telephone tower. Oh, yeah. and you'll see it through there. Thank you with the fruits and flour. Just for the new towers that they've got to um, build it. I think that one's about to fall in. That was it. Thanks Very good. so much, Ralph. It's great that everyone is getting out and about and just noticing different things at the time. So that's great.